Good morning, everybody. Joe here. Uh, this is a little off-the-cuff thing. Uh, I'm in my basement. I got my microphone and everything, so real profesh setup, right? I've been meaning to record something for a, a couple weeks now, and I always deleted it because after the fact, I was thinking, no, nah, that that didn't uh, that didn't check all my boxes. Well, this morning, I decided I cannot delay any longer. A uh, an LT that was in my OTS class killed himself yesterday or the day before. I found out this morning uh, some friends of mine from that same class had posted something, and um, I have to admit, I I know I know this individual. I recognize him, but I uh, I didn't know him personally. I didn't know him very well, and it's. Uh, it's uh, it's interesting to say the least. Um, it makes you wonder just what was going on, you know, the what's and the whys. So the the video I've been wanting to do the past couple weeks now follows the uh, the Air Force wide announcement for the uh, resiliency tactical pause that General Goldfein and Chief Wright uh, directed downward to the match comms and to the wings, etc. Our wing commander um, had a thing a couple weeks ago at a briefing and was sort of outlining uh, the intent and um, emphasized that he wants the squadrons, maybe even the smaller shops, the work centers, to to come together. This isn't some wing-directed mass wingman day style briefing or anything. He doesn't want that. I don't think that's the intent of the RTP. I've been thinking of uh, of ways maybe I could sort of uh, put something together because uh, the first priority, the first uh, emphasis is on airman connectedness. So I'm going to try and juggle a couple ideas, but um, I guess at the end of the day, uh, man, if somebody's made up their mind, what are you going to do? So it does make you wonder, um, just what can we do? Uh, the whole... Uh, catalyst for the RTP announcement was the fact that uh, at the moment we were at 78 or 79 suicides just this year alone. Uh, that's putting us on track to maybe 140 or 150. That's the highest that uh, the Air Force has seen in the last 10 years or more. So these are, uh, we're talking about 150 lives, and right now we're talking about 80 actual lives that um, are gone. Their families disheveled at best and at worst destroyed. Now the past videos that I've wanted to put together are um, were just me discussing the RTP and um, throwing my idea out there just trying to get a, a gauge of whether it would have a uh, support from anybody else. I haven't really discussed it with anybody. But um, that's... No, this isn't the place for that. So I'm going to talk to my airmen when I get in today and try to emphasize that... Um, and I've even felt this way before. That you might not feel connected to the people you work with you might just perceive them as people that you work with. But at the end of the day, whether you've been in for six months or 16 years, you're part of the Air Force family. You're, you're part of a family. While uh, you might share the same last name as your siblings or your parents, you do have U.S. Air Force on your jacket too, on your blouse. So that's a second last name that we all have. So we're all airmen. We're all in this together. And whatever it is that's weighing on you so heavily, whatever it is that is, uh, is killing you on the inside, you don't have to carry that burden by yourself. You absolutely do not have to. And you shouldn't. Now... Maybe you don't know the people that you work with that well. And you don't want to share this information or, or whatever it is with them. 
it's totally fine. I understand. Uh, right after I got to my first base, I said a couple things uh, while uh, drunk, and it was to my sponsor. Uh, I said I wanted to kill myself. I said I was suicidal. And she told my supervisor and my master sergeant, my NCYC, who should have known when that was the right thing to do. But then she also told everybody else in the shop. So for maybe the first couple of years, I was more or less ostracized. And then when new people would come in after the fact, like three people came in a few months after I did. And they found out about it too. Gee, I wonder how. So, I've been going to life skills or mental health pretty much my entire career. And I think it's helped me out a lot because early on I was, uh, I, I was in, I was in a weird mental state. I used to cut when I was in high school and that kind of went into my early 20s. Uh, that was how I dealt with stress. And I don't know if it was a... a a gateway. I, I mean, I did seriously contemplate and consider like how when I was uh, younger, but I haven't been in that state of mind in over 10 years. And it's unfortunate what, uh, how it all started, you know, what led me to go to mental health in the first place, but it was for the best. So I've been going to mental health my entire career. I've been on an SSRI, some sort of medication, pretty much my entire career. And I'm, I st I'm still in, you know. I still have my clearance. I was at a PRP base, so it did kind of throw my PRP into a bit of, um, uh, I want to say limbo. It juggled it around for a while, so I couldn't fully participate you know, in, in two-person concept or anything, so that was kind of unfortunate. But at the end of the day, even after getting outed as crazy, I mean, I wonder if she thought that was going to make it any better. Anyway, even after all that, even after going to uh, and seeing different counselors, shoot, tech school, my first base, my first deployment, my second base. Uh, I don't think I saw anybody at my second deployment. Uh, my third base. And then here. I went to, the, they do group therapy here. So as opposed to you seeing a counselor and then you getting started on a medication plan or something, they send you to four group therapy sessions where it's you and a few other people and you just discuss how to handle problems, how to handle stress, and you just discuss what's going on with you in a group setting. And it, it was different and I think it helped. It definitely gave me some tools that I could use. So if, uh, if you don't think you can talk to the people you work with because you're afraid that what might happen to you, you know, or what happened to me might happen to you, then go to mental health. That's a service that's provided to you for that reason, just like ADAPT. You know, if you uh, have an alcohol problem, the Air Force's first reflex isn't to kick you the F out. We have ADAPT for that purpose, to take care of you, to do something about it. Because the Air Force is a family, and that's what it does. It takes care of its own. Now, some of you might disagree. But that's why some of these services are in place. And if you are feeling suicidal, if you are feeling alone, if you are feeling desperate, please do not act on what you're thinking or feeling. You got to give yourself a minute, take a deep breath. And if you need to see somebody, if you need to talk to somebody, even if you don't think you need to, you should. Just talk to somebody. Just do us all a favor. Do yourself a favor and talk to somebody. It doesn't have to be somebody you work with. It doesn't have to be a supervisor. It doesn't have to be anybody in your squadron, in your work center. It can be a third party that has no personal stake in this. 
It can be a counselor. It can be a therapist. It can be a psychologist. It can be somebody at medical who you just need to talk at, not even talk to. You can just talk at them and then just go from there. That's all I would want you to do. That's all I would want this LT to do. Nobody knows what's going on in your head. Nobody knows what's going on under the surface. If I hadn't said anything, uh, who who knows how much longer that would have festered, you know, in, in under my skin, inside my head. Nobody would have known if I hadn't said something. I didn't mean to say anything. But at my other bases, I had reached points where I'm like, man, I'm always getting angry or I'm feeling depressed or there's just something, there's just something not right. And I guess because I'm used to it, I just I nip it in the bud and I go talk to somebody. And use me as an example. Like I said, I got outed to everybody in my work center, even airmen that came in after I did, as crazy. And I still, it sucked. And that might have um, broken or, or ruined a few other people. But I'm still here. So if you're worried about your career, if you're worried about security clearances, if you're worried about any of that stuff, don't be. Use me as an example. I'm still here. I'm still in. I haven't received an LOC, an LOR, an Article 15 related to it. I've only received like two LOCs my entire career. There's been no fallout from going to mental health, from talking to medical I'm just getting help. None at all. So don't worry about that. Sigma doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. So I, uh, that's really all I, I can say. If I continue on any further, it's going to be redundant. So um, it really sucks what happened to uh, my fellow classmate. And I hope that nobody else is feeling the way he did. And if you are, if anybody is, give yourself a, a fighting chance. And just go talk it out with somebody. That's all. That's really all we could ask for. That's all I would want. So I'm going to talk to my airmen and, uh, this morning and just try to get that out there too. And I recommend everybody else do the same. Just talk to your people. Just touch base with them. And uh, let them know that they are part of this Air Force family. And that they might not feel that connected to the people they work with. I sure as hell didn't. I pretty much hated everybody I worked with because of what happened. But there are other people in your Air Force family that you can turn to. So... Give yourself a shot. Give yourself a fighting chance. Don't give up. Just do, do do what I think is best for you and what's best for both your families. Take a breath. Talk to somebody. There's the suicide hotline. There's military one source. And then there's your medical group right there on base. There's your supervision. And there's your peers. There's your family, if you have any. Everybody has parents, at least they did. So there's that avenue. If you have siblings, there's there's somebody. There's always somebody. You are not alone. You're not by yourself. You're not cut off from the rest of the universe. Okay? So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully uh, any one thing I said, somebody will take to heart. Somebody will take to heart. Oh, it's still early. <sighs> All right. This is Joe. Till next time.